I know it's been a while, and my video on the Dutch Moonrock has still not been released. The script is written, but production on the previous 10 episodes nearly killed me, and quite frankly, I need a break from Moonrocks. The incident is already old news, and since then some new information has emerged. It seems that I made a mistake in episode 10, but with the release of this new information, that mistake is no longer a mistake. If you recall previously, the Apollo samples turned out to have compositions and minerals within the same ranges as terrestrial igneous rocks and HED meteorites. They also contained comparable amounts of water and ferric iron oxides, substances that are arguably either lunar in origin or terrestrial contamination. The only thing new found in these rocks were the minerals armalkalite, tranquillityite, and pyroxferroite. According to one of my sources, all three of these minerals were later found to occur naturally on the Earth. But it has since come to my attention that only armalkalite and pyroxferroite were found on Earth. Tranquillityite has never been found on Earth and is unique to the Apollo samples. That is, until now. On January 7, 2012, Hayden Mosop directed me to this recent article in the Advertiser. Rare Moon Mineral Found in Australia A mineral brought back to Earth by the first men on the moon and long thought to be unique to the lunar surface has been found in Australian rocks more than one billion years old, scientists say. Named after Apollo 11's 1969 landing site at the Sea of Tranquility, Tranquillityite was one of three minerals first discovered in rocks from the moon and the only one not to be found in subsequent years on Earth. Australian scientist Berger Rasmussen said Tranquillityite had long been considered as the moon's own mineral until geologists discovered it, by chance, in rock from resources-rich Western Australia. In over 40 years it hadn't been found in any terrestrial samples, Rasmussen from Curtin University told AFP. When the moon samples first came back, Rasmussen said they were considered to be extremely precious and had been subjected to intense detailed study when, ironically, their contents were right here all the time. They were always part of Earth. They haven't come from the moon, he said of his work on the discovery published in the journal Geology. It tells you that broadly overall you have similar chemistries and similar processes operating on the moon as on Earth. As well as being quirky and surprising, Rasmussen said the discovery also had important practical applications, with the mineral proving to be an excellent dating tool that had allowed scientists to pin down the rock's age. We used this mineral to date the dolerite which had previously been undated, so that helped us understand the geological history, he said. They were 1.07 billion years old, more ancient than rocks in the area that had previously been thought to be, and Rasmussen said Tranquillityite would be useful in dating similar rocks in the future. I think it will be a lot more widespread than just the six locations we found it so far, he added of the rare mineral. Various other newspapers and reputable space websites carried similar articles. Reading through the geology article in question, we find this table comparing the composition of the Australian Tranquillityite samples with that of their counterparts from the Apollo samples. Although data for the trace elements in lunar Tranquillityite is not available, it's rather clear that the composition of terrestrial and lunar Tranquillityite is almost exactly the same. The only noticeable difference is that they have less zirconium dioxide than the lunar rocks. An exception being this one, which only has slightly less than this Apollo 14 specimen. The team unanimously concluded, Although Tranquillityite has not been documented before from terrestrial rocks, its presence in dolerite from six localities in Western Australia suggests that it also occurs in mafic igneous rocks elsewhere. So once again, the Apollo samples are not unique from terrestrial igneous rocks at all. They contain nothing that makes them unique from their terrestrial cousins, or even the HED meteorites that have been believed to be, or even mistaken for lunar meteorites. In short, no real surprises at all. And of all the places to find this, quote, unique lunar mineral, it was found in Australia. You know, the same place where tons of tectites have been discovered, Glassy objects that some scientists believe are of lunar origin because of their chemical similarities to the high silica glasses found in the Apollo samples? Coincidence? I think not.
Thank you. 